Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections, and today I'm going to share our process for using an infrared camera when scanning electric panels during home inspections. So we've been using infrared cameras during home inspections for probably the last decade or so, even longer than that. And at some point, we've found so much value in all the different things that we do with an infrared camera that we stopped including this as an add-on service to our home inspections and just said, this is a standard service. We're using infrared cameras throughout the entire inspection. There's all these different things we're gonna do and it's just gonna be part of your home inspection from now on. And one of those things is to do a scan of the electric panel. We're looking for hot spots, we're looking for overloaded circuits, and we're looking for bad connections that could create hot spots in the panel. And to do this, we start at the beginning of our inspection, we start by turning on pretty much everything in the house. We're turning on ceiling fans, exhaust fans, if there's an electric clothes dryer, well, all clothes dryers have electricity, whether it's gas or electric, it's gonna have a motor in there, it's gonna use electricity. We turn on the furnace's blower fan, all kinds of stuff. We turn on all the stuff that's gonna run for a long time, and we do a scan of the electric panel. We do it by removing the panel cover, and then we take our infrared camera and we scan the whole thing looking for hot spots. But what exactly is a hot spot? And then what do you do about it if you find a hot spot? That's kind of the big question that I think a lot of home inspectors have. And I see this discussed in a lot of home inspector forums. What do you do about this? How hot is too hot? What's an acceptable temperature for a circuit breaker? I don't know that there's any public published standard for what is too hot of a temperature. I think that generally it's somewhere around 70 degrees above ambient temperature. Now that's, a, that's an important distinction there because the ambient temperature might be zero degrees. I remember inspecting a townhome once where it was zero in the garage, the circuit breaker was 70 degrees. So if we're simply saying 70 degrees is acceptable, well, it's not. We had a 70 degree rise in temperature. That's really what's important there. So. We're, we're checking the ambient temperature rise and you know typically I'd say somewhere around 70 degrees is where I get concerned but I'm checking out everything. If there's a hot breaker I'm probably going to check it out and try to get to the bottom of it and to do that I'm going to use a clamp on electrical tester uh, something like this. You know what I'm going to do a video I'm going to go down to the main panel in my own house and I've already made one hot breaker. I used a hair dryer and a box fan. I'm gonna get those going and I'm gonna make a hot breaker and then we're gonna see what it looks like. We'll, we'll go through the process. Let's go downstairs. So I'm down here at my own house. I've got the panel cover removed at my electric panel. I've got an infrared camera, although instead of using the big gun type of camera that most of the inspectors use during our inspections, I'm gonna use a different one. I kind of prefer the image that I get from this tiny little one that plugs into my phone. I've blogged about it in the past. I'm gonna use this one instead. So. After removing the panel cover as a home inspector, the next step I take is to scan the entire panel looking for hot spots. So I'm going to take a video here with my phone. So we're scanning the whole panel. I'm looking for hot spots. I'm starting at the top. And as you can see right away, there's a couple of wires at the top right in this image that those look really warm. I mean, if I, uh, if I zoom in, they're not super warm. The hottest point in this image is 85 degrees, but they're a lot warmer than everything else, so they kind of stick out. Then we've got what looks like a circuit breaker at the top left here, and that's pretty warm. It's 110 degrees almost, but it's not actually a circuit breaker. That is a surge suppressor. It's doing work, so it's expected for it to be warm. Not a concern there. As we come down the panel, you can see we still got those hot wires coming down inside the panel uh, on the right side. And then this, this warm one you see in here, this is an AFCI, GFCI breaker. Those do work. They have, they have circuitry in there and they're going to run hot. There's no question about it. 
And I'm gonna skip this next one here because I know what's going on with this one. This one is this one is pretty warm. When we scan it, it looks like uh, I don't know, maybe almost 100 degrees. And then we've got another warm one here. This is an AFCI GFCI combo. Again, those run hot, not a big deal. And then the last thing in here is my Sense Energy Monitor, and that's doing work too. So it's normal for that to be a little bit warm. The one I'm, I'm, I'm really, as a, as a home inspector, as I, as I look at this whole panel, the only thing of concern here is the one hot wire. Why is this hot? That's what I wanna to get to the bottom of. Everything else looks perfectly normal. And also, that, that breaker is warm, and this is just a typical circuit breaker. For your typical circuit breakers that aren't doing anything special, like AFCI, GFCI functionality, there's no reason for those to run hot unless you have excessive current going through them or you have a connection problem at the panel bus bar. And given the fact that we've got a hot wire, there's no reason for me to think that we have a loose connection at the panel. That hot wire is because we've got current going through it. So the big question here is, is this warm wire a problem? The maximum amount that we should have going through a circuit is 80%. And like I said, we've already turned everything on, all the lights, all that other stuff. So we should be below 80% of the max for that circuit breaker. And this circuit breaker, the, the one in question that's running a little bit warm, that's a 15 amp breaker. So I should expect to see less than 12 amps, which is 80% of 15. I should see less than 12 amps going through there. If I see less than 12, then I say, okay, just a little bit warm, not that big of a deal. But if it's over 12, then we've got a problem. And to figure that out, how much is going through there, well, I'll take my, uh, my clamp-on meter. The particular one I'm using, this is a Sperry DSA 500. I've had this for a long time, more than a decade, I'm sure. Uh, it's been reliable. I, I'm not here to talk about which one you should get. This is just the one I happen to own. Uh, but the way it works is I, I just turn it to the correct range. Normally it's off. I'll turn it to the lower range. And I'm just going to put that clamp directly on the wire. But first, let me zoom in a little so you can see what I'm doing. So this is the circuit breaker in question. And then I can see there's a little wire coming out of there. I'll take my clamp meter, put it on there and it's given me a reading of about 13 and a half amps, and that's excessive amperage. Like I said, shouldn't be any more than 12. So at this point, I'd say we've got an overloaded circuit. Have an electrician come out and figure out what the problem is and design the repair and fix it. So that's a quick little overview, quick little demonstration on how we use infrared cameras paired with clamp-on amp meters to help determine whether circuits are overloaded and whether a warm circuit is a problem or not. Again, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.